morning all and today is the big day today is the day i head off to japan So, uh, we've already hit one snack this morning and it's kind of reason the clock up. I woke up at three and I was like, I'm going to check the flights. So, um, my friend Jeff was supposed to be coming from Aberdeen, I believe. And um, he essentially was going to get a layover plane. So, it meant he got a plane here. So, I believe his plane was due to land here about an hour and 20 minutes before the plane to Japan. So, he literally was going to jump off that plane and go to that plane. So I was looking up the planes and I looked up my one quickly and it was all fine. It's like my the plane we're taking today was like all on time, brilliant. Of course, things are changing in the next few hours, hopefully not. But, um, <laughs> I decided to click up his because I knew like his flight number because I thought um, it'd been pretty good. I had, actually had been, like, you know that thing you do before you go on holiday, you always check the flights before you or I do that. I'm probably just very sad <laughs> but yeah so I was like checking it and occasionally they'd be a little bit late but I'd say they always make it in I'd say you'd still be able to probably connect to that other flight because it's the same term and everything well I looked at it today <laughs> and the flight is coming in at like one o'clock I'm not joking and it's supposed to arrive at like seven o'clock it's eight hours late so I've not got in contact with him yet, so we need to find out what's going on there. But um, yeah, I was just checking because I thought maybe there's another way to get to London Aberdeen. I already checked. I think driving is like nine hours. That won't get you here in time. You need to have started doing that like a long time ago to get here in time for that. And I think the train is a long time. And of course, it's the middle of the night and the trains won't be going at this time. So yeah, so we're going to have to sort that out. So hopefully... Hopefully things get a bit better there. And I'm all packed and ready to go. So we actually have an update with Jeff. Uh, he just contacted me. Apparently Aberdeen is covered in absolute fog right now. So meaning that nothing can go or come. So he's got to his airport. So he's just going to keep me updated. I think the last I checked, I mean, this could get better. Um, I believe the plane that he's meant to get, and remember, this is supposed to land at about 7.40, is at the moment planned to land at 3 o'clock. <laughs> Not 3 o'clock in the morning, no, 3 o'clock at night. Time to say goodbye to the room, goodbye television, goodbye chair, that looks like <laughs> And goodbye, level 188 of the back rooms. Jesus Christ, this looks twice as cursed at like 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, so at the foyer, hang and check out. Right, checked out of the hotel, all easy peasy. So let's see if this bus arrives. Bloody hell, like the second you sort of come into this bridge area, it is absolutely freezing. It's like outdoors cold um yeah it is like still four something in the morning so uh, i could understand why that is i don't know people uh this looks like it could also be a level in the back rooms what do you think make this a level in the back rooms Well, I'm back at the uh, bus garage and they have decided to shut it. Oh well. Hug me, brother. Please. Wait. Here. Yeah, so still waiting here. Turns out my bus is actually running a little bit late. Thank God, because literally a bus just came there. I almost jumped at it because I was like, wait, that, that's the right number. It turns out that bus would have gone the totally wrong direction. So I'm kind of glad and stuck to my guns and stood here. It would just would have been perfect if the hugging man was open. Oh, well. Terminal 5. 
Okay, so I'm here all ready to check in. Um, I'm actually going to make sure I do that. I'm not going to vlog myself doing that because I really want to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So, see you on the other side. And we're here, we're all in there. Check-in wasn't too bad. Oh, yeah, there was an interesting point. I went to that one, I went to one desk because they sent me to a desk. And then all of a sudden they're like, no, go to this other desk. And then I was like, because they wouldn't put out my boarding pass on the machines because of um, you need to talk to someone if you're going to Japan because they need to see COVID certificates, which I luckily had. So I got sent over to E and I sort of got there and went, oh, I really hope they can print tickets off here because it's going to be really awkward having to go back to F. And the line had gotten quite big at that point, so that's why they sent us all over to E. And luckily, yes, that was good. They actually, the lady was super nice. So we actually spoke to see what she wants to go to Tokyo. So I'm here right now in Giraffe. Um, I just ordered a big breakfast, toast and a Coke. Um, so it's going to be my last taste of English food for two weeks pretty much. So yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, really excited. So I'm um, happy all in. Security went fine. Um, go through security fine. This and here it is. Here is my toast. And here is my mushrooms. And here, oh, it's all the stuff. And underneath the toast is the best part of the sausage. I'm going to tuck into this and hopefully see you in a minute. Mm, that lovely breakfast, wait for the bill, and then we can go and have a look around the airport. So we're now here at the airport and we're looking around some shops, so let's have a little look. <laughs> like there's a Harry Potter shop here. I know certain people won't be happy about that, but it's still an interesting look. I won't be buying anything before anyone asks, um, but it's still actually like all this nice little stuff here. It's really cool. I mean, for an airport. <laughs> You just love these British rubber ducks. The beggar doesn't deserve any of these giant tobacco rows. Oh, I think I'm probably going to go to that one. That's really cool that they do these here. Because they're going to be on a long flight. And it just means I have one bag of Harry Bows and I won't probably eat the entire thing. I am not that picky. But it's cool that I managed to find it. Just noticed that Wagamama's upstairs. I could have could have come like proper. Fun fact there is actually no Wagamama's actually in Japan. Right, I'm just waiting for the gate to be called. It's now 7.39. So the gate will be called any moment. Right, we got a gate at last. We got C36. So we 63, I mean, that would be interesting. <laughs> that doesn't exist, right? 66, so that means it's down here. We are going down to the train. I will admit, I do enjoy good trains, so I am actually looking forward to it. I actually have ridden this before. I read it the last time I went to Japan with my sister. Oh wow, it's like we're going underneath, right? It's funny, we're going like underneath the planes now. <laughs> it's like, wow. You can see all the brick cause this is a uh, terminal five stuff. So order them British Airway. You're tr so I was trusting that train that plane over there, I'd be too late because they are putting away. As you said, we're here at the train station. Very nice it's a train station, so all the people getting off get off that side and we all get on this side. The train is just coming. As you can see everyone gets left off one end, because those are all the people departing. And here we go, we get on the train. Something's gonna tell me this is gonna be a very, very long walk. So how many escalators? 
latest I've been up to date already. Oh, look at everything. <laughs> area remember when i went i think it was 2014 and we're like no shops around here so if you wanted shops of course this one's shut but there is a wh here, which is good if you want to pick anything up and plus it's quite unbusy oh, i go around here they're really they're just like nope you got to go to the furthest away one here we are at the gate it's not too bad yet let's go and look at our place That's a beauty, I'm pretty sure. That's a problem we're going on. Well, actually, no, that's two levels, so no, I don't think it is. We're not going on a two level one. And these, actually, yeah, actually looking at it, I think it's this one over here. Because, yeah, we're definitely on a one level one. I've only ever been on a two level plane once in my life, and it was with Virgin, and I went to Florida with my family. We actually went on the top deck, it was really fun. <laughs> Busk at the ready, yeah. Right, I'm in group eight and we're up to group seven, so I will be boarding in a matter of moments. Yes, that's me. Almost time to go in. Yay. And a warm welcome to voiceover, Tim. So yeah, I didn't want to annoy anyone next to me by continuously vlogging on the plane. So I have decided to do this part all as a voiceover. As you can see, I am walking over to my seat and right now I'm actually going to show you a really, really awesome hack. There is some potential downsides to it, so please do listen. But my God, I think I've saved myself quite a lot of money by doing this. So the hack I have done is a pretty simple one. All I have done is put the seat at the front. You'll be shocked to find out that this only costs anything from 82 to 90 pounds to book on British Airways. Now sitting in the next level up, which only gave you a little bit more leg room, but it easier cost me four to 500 pounds more. And then sitting in business would have cost me thousands more. Right people, and here is the money shop. Look at how much leg room I got. Now, here are the unfortunate downsides. Number one, you are next to the toilets. Now, I know some people were saying, right, that's a good thing. But do understand that if you someone does a really smelly number two, you're going to smell it potentially. Also, if somehow the toilet broke, yeah, um, you're also going to smell it. Also, the other little thing is sometimes people sort of will spend hanging time hanging out at the toilets. Uh, talking and stuff so if you're sleeping that potentially could be a pain in the backside lucky there wasn't really anybody doing this uh, in my flight and um, yeah it was quite nice but the other thing is that sometimes the queue may potentially sort of start moving into the space area between the seats luckily this really didn't affect me because there was so much room um, I have still have plenty of room to uh, put my legs up so this is just more of a this could potentially happen. And number two is the middle area is normally where they'll put uh, people who are traveling with very young children, normally children under the age of one. Um, of course, we actually did have a very little baby travel in this area and it was actually very well behaved. It did quite try a little bit. And of course, I do understand babies are going to cry and understand that, yes, people are going to want to travel with their kids. But do understand that potentially you do just get stuck. You can potentially get stuck next to a baby who will cry a lot of the way there. So um, that's more of a, hey, if you really do hate crying babies. Probably this is not the place for you to sit. And the last issue which is more really a minor issue is the seat is not the widest uh i was stuck in the middle uh the two people i was sitting between were actually really lovely and uh, i the thing is that you, when you're stuck next to two people especially um 
yeah, you have to be very careful that you're not your arms aren't like going out everywhere. And I was really just trying not to annoy the other people, but they were really chill about it. It was funny, even the woman next to me was like, Oh no, you go ahead. I mean she said it feels like well we're all little dinosaurs with the <laughs> with our little like little arms. But yeah, um I mean the seat would have just been absolutely perfect if it just had just been just a little bit wider. But apart from that, for a 14 hours flight, this was absolutely amazing. Right, and it was time to take off. And what better way to get ready for Japan by watching the best anime? And it's the one they go to Japan! And now time for our first meal of the plane. I'm not going to lie, plane food is pretty terrible. And today's meal was some sort of chicken curry. I will admit, I'm not a curry fan. I know I'm British and I should hand back my British pass. I did try a few bites and it was okay, but plain food really is just a bit meh. I will admit the dessert that actually came with it was really, really nice. And trust me, I have had desserts from aeroplane meals that have been absolutely disgusting. So at least we got a win there. After this, I decided to test out the on-flight Wi-Fi, which is weird because I have seen no other reviews of the British Airways Wi-Fi. There are actually two styles of package, messaging and streaming. Messaging just means you can simply use things like Facebook Messenger to contact people. And then the streaming one claims that you can actually stream stuff like Netflix on it. I decided to go with the streaming one and I went for a whole flight package that cost me 21 pounds. First off, let's check out YouTube. Yeah, I put it on a video here and it works pretty well. Funny to think that I would literally be hearing this song practically everywhere I would go in Japan because it's that damn popular. Then I thought I'd really put YouTube to the test and found some live streams. Of course, being a Hollow Live fan, I quickly went over to see if any Hollow Live girls are streaming and I managed to actually find a live stream. This is where things were running a bit slower, I'm afraid. I found a Pico stream and unfortunately it seemed to be more the same. Then I decided to try my totally legal TV streaming app and it actually seemed to be working quite well. But now for the real test. As it was the second day of the World Cup, it was the day of England's first match. I was worried that I was going to miss the game, but having Wi-Fi meant that I could at least keep up with it on BBC. But the good thing is I wanted to see if I was able to stream the entire match live on the plane. And apart from the odd little cutout, it was a mission success and a 6-2 win to England. What a win! The only thing I did spot off was that the BBC iPlayer had been geo-blocked. So, so yes, I had to go to other means to get this football match up. I also watched all of Holland's 2-0 victory over Senegal and all of Wales's 1-1 draw of the USA with very little lag and was quite an enjoyable experience. So much so that by the time the Wales match had ended, it was practically almost time to land. Nothing like six hours of football to get you through a 14 hour flight. And we had made it. 14 hours later, we had finally made it to Japan. And at last, it was time to disembark the plane and to start my very first adventure in Japan. Getting through COVID checks, customs and passport control. And make sure to join us next week where I'll go into full detail on all three things plus show you the Tokyo monorail.
And remember, there will be a new Timothy in Japan every Tuesday and Thursday. And please, 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 don't forget to subscribe to catch more Timothy in Japan. Trust me, it really helps smaller channels like us in the algorithm. Also, if you could give us a like and a click on the bell icon, that would be amazing. And any comments on anything you thought was cool in this video. Don't forget we are also on Twitter at AnimeUK and on Instagram at AnimeUK0. Until next time, see you again. Bye.